When former President Trump addresses the North Carolina Republican Convention Saturday night, he reportedly plans to tear into Dr. Anthony Fauci amid recent revelations about what the White House's chief medical advisor knew and when he knew it. Let's discuss the dynamics of media coverage of the current versus former administrations with The Hill media columnist and Fox News contributor Joe Concha. Welcome back, Joe. Shannon, I like the 80s look you have tonight. I don't know if it's because you're going to Studio 54 afterwards or in New York, <laughs> but I'm, I'm enjoying this right now. Well done. Thank you. I love an 80s vibe, 80s music, uh, but I will say as, <laughs> as much fun as we're having in New York, they're not quite that open yet. I don't think the clubs are open. You know me, I'm quite the clubber. Uh, okay, so let's talk about <laughs> this. Uh, former President Trump is going to speak tomorrow night is the expectation, and this is what a, a, an op-ed in Media 8, this was the headline, Media Don't Help Trump Gaslight the January 6th Terrorist Attack this weekend, saying, it's vitally important that the rest of the media frame Saturday's speech as one being delivered by the person who incited an act of terrorism designed to overturn the 2020 election. Anything else would be normalizing an act of domestic terrorism. Uh, your take on their assessments of how the media should or shouldn't cover the former president. Well, this will be the focus, right? Every time Donald Trump appears in public, January 6th will immediately be evoked by those on the left in the media. And that's the challenge that Donald Trump has. While if he runs for president in 2024, Shannon, every analyst that you speak to out there, uh, including me, would say that he absolutely will get the nomination, given that he had 74 million votes in 2020. So that's a big head start. And if you're a Ron DeSantis or you're a Mike Pence or you're a Nikki Haley, that's way too much to overcome, particularly when you consider from a media perspective that if Donald Trump runs, he will get most or all of the media, of the media attention. But January 6th is something that will dog him every time he speaks, every time he is in public, and then issues will go to the side and any election will again come back to a referendum on Donald Trump's personality, his rhetoric, and not so much the positions that he stands for. So very interesting uh, that that in terms of that editorial, mm -hmm. and that's basically a preview of things that we'll see uh, moving forward if Donald Trump does decide to run in 2024, Shannon. Yeah, he's got to make that calculation, and so do Republicans uh, about that day, about January 6th, and how it impacts all kinds of other things and how it should be handled and discussed. Still debating in, in um, you know, Washington what kind of commissioner, but there are a number of investigations underway. We'll watch those as they continue. Meanwhile, I sure. was struck by some things in coverage of the current administration where, listen, we've got Republicans reporters who are working and producers and crews around the clock down at the border 24 seven because nothing has really changed down there. If anything, it's gotten worse, according to the numbers coming from official government agencies. I want to play a little bit of this video. It is heartbreaking. But just to remind people, this is a little boy who was five years old, but apparently abandoned by whoever had gotten him to this point. But just a reminder for people. regardless of what your party is about this little boy that is gut-wrenching to see that nobody wants to see any kids terrified taken through terrible circumstances I don't care who the president is or isn't but it made me think about this cover of Time magazine when the border was um, you know experiencing trouble as it did under every administration but also under the Trump administration um, this is the cover of Time magazine now, even the Washington Post called this out as a mistake the way it characterized what was happening under President Trump they said this implication was clear this was a girl who was being separated from her mother but that's not what it was as the Washington Post Samantha Schmidt and Christine Phillips report the girl's father says the child and her mother were never separated U.S. Customs and Border Protection confirmed it, as did the Honduran Deputy Foreign Minister. So my question is, we should want these kids to be taken care of no matter who's running the country. There was such a quick jump to blame President Trump for this terrified little girl. But when we see this video of this little boy over the last couple of days, why isn't there similar coverage and outrage or questions about what can be done? Well, I guess because a D is next to the current president's name, right, and the vice president and Kamala Harris. We're now at nine weeks, Shannon, since she was given the responsibility of fixing the crisis at the border. She has not had a press conference. She will not visit the U.S. southern border. I know she's going to Central America next week, but the only way you solve a problem is to see it up close and personal and talk to border officials and see these migrant facilities. and. Again, as somebody who has a five-year-old boy, 
uh, my, my, uh, my son Liam, uh, tonight, as you know, in the New York area, we had some thunderstorms at least uh, in more in the afternoon, and he was hiding downstairs in our basement because that's what I told him to do when, when, a, when a big storm comes, that the basement's the safest part. And, and just to see a kid crying like that at that age, I can't help but think of my son and, and think of how scared that boy was because at least my son was in our house and he knew I was upstairs. That, that boy, he doesn't know where his parents are. He's in the middle of the night. He, he doesn't know what's going on. And the fact that President Biden isn't being taken to task more for what this crisis is, it's not even a crisis, it's a catastrophe at the border. When you think about the numbers, the record number of people that are coming here illegally at this point and that kids are being used as pawns, I, I just think that, let's put it this way, Kids in Cages was retired, Shannon, on January 20th when the president was inaugurated because that term no longer exists. This responsibility in terms of the president no longer exists in terms of what we see with videos like this, with kids being abandoned at the border, being thrown over the wall, literally. It's, it is, you're right, heart-wrenching is the only words to say, particularly when you have children yourself, Shannon. Yeah, and th this has gone on for a long time. It's exponentially worse at this moment in time. And any responsible lawmaker who has a heart and sees that has got to come to the table and figure something out. These are human beings. Joe, Indeed. thank you very much. Good to see All you All right, Shannon, always. thank you.